prior to heading offshore for the Chesapeake Bay from Miami, I wanted to do a more sturdy repair to the seacock and corroded elbow to the galley sink drain, which I had repaired earlier. So I got to dive down and put the plug in on the outside, but got a little sidetracked here scrubbing some growth off the bottom. Okay, so now I have the hammer and the plug, and you can see that goop on it is silicone gasket grease, which I slathered on so that it will better seal. Uh, last time, if you recall, the plug didn't completely seal off, so I still had water coming into the boat while I was trying to make the repair. And the silicone gasket grease uh, solved that problem. So back aboard now, we can begin dismantling the seacock. First, got to get the uh, got to get the nuts off, and then we can remove the tapered plug. And I got my pump and bucket ready since there's going to be an initial rush of water. But so long as the plug is doing its job, should stop pretty quickly once the hose drains. But it, it's always a scary moment. One of the reasons I wanted to revisit my repair of the seacock is I found that I had to tighten the nuts so much that I could no longer turn the seacock, could shut the valve on and off. And uh, it was the only way that I could keep it completely watertight. So I want to try to rectify that situation right now. As you can see, I was struggling to even turn the seacock with the nuts removed there. thing I want to do here, as several people suggested in the comment section, which is to clean the, the plug off. Then rough it up with some sandpaper. So after roughing up the plug with some sandpaper, we'll clean out the inside of the pipe there and then insert the plug with the handle and proceed to open and close the valve about a hundred times or so. And what this will do is it'll grind the two surfaces together so that they match and uh, that will form a watertight seal. So I thought this would be a good time to do a video for you guys on tools, spare parts, and raw materials which I carry on board, which I have found useful if not necessary if you plan to go long distance cruising. Now I've owned this boat for nearly 19 years, logged somewhere around 80,000 miles, so it's a lot of stuff that I've accumulated. So what I'm going to try to do is break each category down, tools, spare parts, raw materials, and begin with the most in-demand items. So I'm going to start with tools and start with the tools that I use the most and what I would consider are absolutely necessary if you plan to go long distance cruising or, or even, um, even just on a short coastal cruise. So let's get started here. So most of these tools I keep in these two drawers underneath the chart desk. As you can see, they slide open, not always easily, and stuff sometimes gets jammed when you try to open the drawer. And then we have the lower drawer down here. So obviously, you want to have screwdrivers on board, flathead, Phillips head, and I even have a square head drive somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Uh, but I use that. Uh, the only the only place I need that is for the um, fatty knees dinghy. Uh, that's the only use I've had for it. But I got that somewhere. And 
The other thing I would recommend is a set of jeweler screwdrivers. These can come in very handy. Jeweler screwdrivers I find are very handy in several applications. Uh, one, for example, is with the solar panels here with the wires attached. Uh, it's, you need a very small screwdriver to get in there um, to attach the ends of the wires. Another handy application for jeweler screwdrivers is attaching your clock and barometer to the bulkhead. Usually those screws are really tiny and jeweler screwdrivers are just perfect for that. And of course let's not forget the tape measure. Now next up in importance I would say are pliers and spanner wrenches and especially vice grips. Um, I would, I would not leave home without a set of vice grips. There are so many cases where uh, vice grips come in very handy. Then a regular set of pliers. <coughs> um, you also want a set of needle nose pliers with, uh, with wire cutters in them. And then uh, spanner wrenches. I have both a large and a small spanner wrench. I also carry a whole set of fixed wrenches both the metric and American standard. But uh, I find as far as use goes, I use spanner wrenches more than I use the fixed wrenches. So next up on the list are basic woodworking tools. And if you have a boat like mine that has a lot of wood on it, uh, these, these are tools that you don't want to leave home without. One is a couple of saws. And I actually don't know what this saw is called. It's just a, a, a small crosscut saw. But I find that this has many uses, and um, and because unlike a unlike a hacksaw, it doesn't have a frame on it. It's easy to get into small places. Similarly, just an old style wood saw, and this one comes apart. And uh, th this thing is ancient. Uh, it's a hand me down from my father. Uh, it's a little dull by now. And there's some bend in the blade, but it still works. Uh, this thing is probably at least 50 years old, if not more. Um, and then, of course, you want a hacksaw for both wood, and this will also is good for cutting metal, fiberglass, plastics. Um, don't leave home without a hacksaw. Um, another item is a hand drill. I do carry an electric drill, but I find especially a float. A hand drill is, is very handy. Uh, it's compact, it can get into small places, and, and you don't have to run it off the inverter, uh, which if you have a low power inverter like mine, power tools are difficult because if you, if you give them too much juice, the inverter will trip out. Um, and this is, this is another hand-me-down from my father, old Stanley. Uh, again, this thing's probably more than 50 years old. And, Occasionally just put a little grease in it, a little, uh, a little oil, and uh, it works great. Then a set of drill bits. I need to buy a new set of drill bits. Uh, these are getting dull. Um, some C-clamps. Uh, one thing on my list is just to get some bigger clamps, because I, I often have uses where I need... Uh, the, the distance here is just too small, so I need some bigger clamps. A uh, couple of wood chisels. A small bevel bevel plane. Um, another immensely useful tool is a carpenter's awl. I uh, highly recommend that. And then, of course, some paint scrapers, paint and varnish scrapers. And, let's not forget, just a good old-fashioned hammer. Now, as far as rigging and sail repairs goes, I would say your basic tool kit is a set of sail needles, a fid, and I find this hollowed out fid is the most convenient, uh, particularly for splicing, because you can get it through the, uh, the strands of the rope and then feed a strand that you're splicing, you can get it into this hollowed out section. And since it's tapered, uh, it's very convenient for all different uh, diameters of rope. And a sharp pair of scissors and a sailor's palm for, for pushing the needle through. Uh, thick cloth. Now one thing I want to draw your attention to here is that not all sail needles are created equal. And you can see the one on the left is just a cheap needle I got when I ordered some whipping twine and it's just round. 
and then uh, and then there's the eye which you put the thread through. The needles you want are the ones that right by the point um, their cross section is triangular and they they have edges here and those edges will cut through the cloth as you push the needle through and make room for the for the twine to pass through them. And the other thing is, uh, it's uh, the way it cuts the cloth is that the hole will then tend to close around the around the thread. And so this is what you want. So something I just wanted to point out when you're purchasing sail needles. And so as we get down to tools that I don't use quite so often, but nonetheless I do use, uh, one is a set of files, uh, both metal files, wood files, wood rasps, rat tail files, triangular shaped files. Um, often comes in handy if you have to cut a bolt off and, and the threads are all um, the threads are all messed up from the saw then you can file it smooth uh, so you don't cut yourself on it. Um, a putty knife has a lot of uses. Wire brush. Uh, a big set of pliers. Razor knife. A set of Allen wrenches. And of course, the socket set with uh, both metric and American standard sockets. Uh, actually, a socket set is pretty important, uh, especially if you have an outboard motor. And finally, a tap and die set. And while I don't use this very often, uh, when you need a tap and die set, it really does come in handy. Um, I, I use this often when I take the bowsprit off. Uh, the threads of the bolts on, on the on the gammon iron and also on the whisker stays, they get corroded and get gunk in them. So you can use a die to clean up those threads. Uh, and it really works well. Now before we move on to power tools, I just want to discuss one other item. I would consider a tool on a long distance cruising boat, which is a dive mask and snorkel, and I carry two of them. And I do consider them necessary tools. If, as we see with this repair I'm doing of the through hull, I use the dive mask and snorkel uh, to dive down and drive the plug in to the outside of the through hull. That would be difficult and quite uncomfortable to do without a dive mask. And while these things are typically stocked in the summer fun and recreation section of department stores, for a long distance cruising boat, I consider them a tool and a necessary tool that you should carry on board. So finally, I only carry three power tools on this boat. One is a drill. And I can run this drill off the inverter. However, my inverter is only 400 watts, so if I if I floor the power there, it'll trip the inverter out. So I generally have to run it at low speeds when I use it when I'm afloat. Most of the time I use the drill is when I haul out and I have shore power. Um, I use it for mixing anti-fouling paint as well as uh, whatever projects I'm working on that need a drill. Another very handy tool is a small saber saw. And this is another ancient, ancient power tool, shopmate. I believe this actually came from my grandfather, so this thing's probably at least 50 years old. It was manufactured by McGraw Edison, looks like in Boonville, Missouri. These old tools just seem, just seem to go forever and ever. And then finally, very handy is a little shop vac. Especially if you're doing carpentry, carpentry projects on a boat, you get sawdust, it gets in all kinds of nooks and crannies. Uh, it's very handy for, uh, for cleaning that up. Well, this video is already getting pretty lengthy, and I'm going to break it up into two parts. Coming up in part two, we will discuss spares and materials and in-between items, by which I mean things like glues and sealants, which I carry on board, and which I would recommend you consider carrying on board if you plan to go long-distance cruising. We'll also finish up the repair of the corroded elbow coming off of that through hull. Um, which goes to the galley sink drain. I'm going to attempt to repair which I hope is a little more sturdy than the previous repair which if you recall was just some duct tape with epoxy on it. Um, 
at least something that'll give me a little more confidence that I'm going to make it back to Virginia without ending up on the bottom of the ocean. As always, thanks everybody for commenting, liking, subscribing to the channel, and donating. Uh, you might have noticed some new camera angles of late in the last video, and that comes courtesy of my new GoPro Hero 7, which is actually my second GoPro. That's a story for another time. Uh, of course, this stuff costs money, so I really appreciate the support. So that's it for now. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.